And I hope I have the settings good so you can follow along with what's happening well enough, but without taking too much time. A lot of action here. The Pearl Harbor attacks just happened. Now, as Alvaro was saying, we're going to be taking a lot of punishment, but there are choices that we can start doing now in the game, or once our turn happens, um, that will affect things. And hopefully make either the damage less to us or make them pay more for their victories. And although, as we can see, a lot of the stuff going on down in the Dutch East Indies is going to be a Japanese walkover, I would say. Um, the results aren't the same every time. Meaning like the Pacific, or the, the attack on Pearl Harbor, isn't um, you know, always the same ships getting sunk or how damaged they are. It, it varies a bit, so you can have it. Okay, this is sort of good to look at here quickly. Um, basic turn report. Scenario notes. Um, quite honestly, I haven't read because I have yet to get anywhere near what would be victory or defeat because I've mostly just been playing the first opening turns a few times. Um, you do need to keep uh, uh, some units up in Man Manchuria to keep um, USSR neut neutral for Japan. We're not playing it now, but if you were playing it, you need to um, China starts at war with Japan. Um, Chinese non-oil units use no oil for upkeeps. Um, Communist China. Okay, special rules. Singapore. These are sort of what I wanted to see. Special rules. Whichever side controls Kuala Lumpur, um, Bandar Lampog port and Saigon cuts supply to the ports, isolating any land units there. This represents control of the surrounding area surrounding narrow sea paths and aggressive aero, aerial naval mining. Historically, the garrison at Singapore was fooled into surrendering by Yamashita and his far inferior force. I can say more on that later. Uh, the special rules um, simulates that. Pearl Harbor, the Japanese player, may not draw supply on any port in the Hawaiian Islands if the Allies control any one of the following. And you know, uh, Australia and East Africa, the Japanese player may not draw. Again, it's going over here um, at the start, U.S. submarine groups, surface value. Um, I think this is meant to, and let me, um, with their torpedo problem, time progress is with their, yes, their torpedo problem, um, U.S. oil. Not going to go over all of these in details, but this is just, just to give you an idea that we're, we're setting up a, his, a very historical um, start with this. And I'm very appreciative of Alvaro very much looking at history. So that gives you a look at what's going on here. As we can see, and well, let's take a quick look here at this map. Now, we mem remember, this is a round thing, the globe, put onto a um, flat surface, and then doing hexes, hexes. So it's not perfect, but we really are getting a good look at it. I know I, I want to show this off just so that we all see a little bit of Canada there, the Aleutian Islands um, up here. You know, does the U.S. want to push for getting like an air base up there, it looks like. Um, we can do that, and it comes down all the way out into India. Now, again, um, trying to simulate this has, has got to be interesting. How do you do the Indian Army? The Indian Army during World War II was the largest all-volunteer army in World War II, but it was still an occupation, an army of occupation, so you can't just take all those units and throw them at the Japanese or something like that because they have to still be doing the sort of colonial occupation as well. Hello, Lancer. Good to have you here. 
Right. Okay. So we need to um, try to keep Kuala Lumpur um, and um, and or here, which we've already lost, and or um, what uh, was it Saigon, I think, or it was one of the other ports around here that would cut off Singapore. So we're going to, unfortunately, we can only move down to here with our garrison forces, but we will get that going there, and I think we're going to abandon this. Well, Ranger, um, glad you're, you're um, excited to be here, going to be playing it. Um, it is good. Now, I'm going to have some questions while I'm playing this, um, and I don't know what the right answer is. Obviously, that's why I'm questioning things here. Now, here, as we can see, um, seems like China is... Uh, for some reason, and I'm not sure if it changes, kept from coming into Burma. Now, China did send a fairly large force into Burma, um, and it was the Treasury Army, if any of you know about, or the Tax Army. I'm not sure which would be the more appropriate term for the, at least some of the units that were there. And um, we can, of course, come up here. And I'm looking here, and I'm seeing that this doesn't look like too, to me at least, doesn't look too threatening because of the lack of supply. So I'm going to see about shifting that up to there. I think we're going to fall back to here. Keeps the game balance between units. China can't cooperate with other reagents. All right. And, and I figured it might be something like a gameplay like that. It's just sort of an interesting um, historical note. Um, U.S. officers periodically, I don't want to say all the time or a lot, but periodically um, with the, the forces, the Chinese forces that were first that had um, escaped out through Burma, but later had been flown over the hump to um, be set up here. They were equipped and trained by U.S. forces. And they'd often come to a... Um, Chinese officer and try to speak to them in pidgin, which is a simplistic form of um, English, if you will, uh, only to be answered back in, um, yes, as Alvaro is saying, this is still uh, a beta version, answered back in very clear English with a southern drawl. The, um, the tax, uh, there's uh, three main academies in China. Uh, military academies, and each of them basically uh, sends armies to, or sends officers to certain armies within China, and they're, especially if you're going back to the Civil War era, era when that was really going on, they were um, actually fighting each other. Um, now, now, I'm going to come this way with this vessel. I don't know, you know, this, there was ABDA float, which was basically a joint uh, naval task force that tried to hold here, but I am, at least at this moment, deciding to abandon this. Now, last time when I just played this a short while ago, when the units was able to retreat out here. Um, and so these naval academies, we have reconnaissance I here. Let's see if we go over to here. Um, let's try an airstrike here. Okay, no real effect that time. Okay, damage one, air loss one. And so um, you have um, the different academies supplying different units. Well, the U.S. had a program uh, set up through the VMI, the Virginia Military Institute, and to train Chinese officers. And I think the officers that, that came to the United States here, um, not yet, we're gonna attack, no damage. And that used up because we had previously engaged here. I'm going to move these guys down here to there. And what I think, Okay, we've lost one of the subs in the air attack. 
Let's see if we can get to Houston out. Okay, we got the Houston out on um, damaged. Let's just see about moving these guys. Um, I think we're going to see about going with Raider mode. Hope I'm getting this right. Come to this will be Raider mode. Let's see about coming over to here. Get them out into the oper operating areas here. And so um, the U.S. was um, training these officers. When they get back to China, they weren't part of any of the three main cliques of officers. So it was hard to find a job within the army for them. And China had a tax army. And what it, its job was wasn't to go around and collect taxes from businesses or people, but from various provinces in China and make sure it got back to, say, the central treasury. Um, and these were large divisional scale forces to be able to do this that would move around China. Um, because I would presume various generals might go, oh, that looks like a nice bunch of collection of taxes. Why don't I take them for, to supply my forces or just uh, other corrupt forces getting a million dollars or whatever in taxes? and well, no, they only gave us 500,000 and turning it. So this tax army was created to to do deal with that. And so a lot of the U.S. trained Chinese officers ended up in that. And they um, were later, of course, um, I'm going to unselect all these. Now you can't, and then I'm going to reselect you. You can't just come out of a port and, and attack. You need to come out. Here we could attack, but um, we're going to see about going after air, do an airstrike on these out here. So um, let's see our results. Oh, we damaged them. We got two damage to us and two air damage and two naval damage to them. And we had more air losses. All right. Now that they are a little bit, we're going to risk a sub-attack. Basically, we got sunk. Now we're going to leave our um, ships in port at this time. We can see these are on the bottom of the port. Basically sunk. Um, the Nevada is still um, functional, but damage. Enterprise. Lexington here. Um, we cannot do a, well, we cannot do a naval airstrike from within the port. We have to sally forth. Um, slightly better in the naval. Hello. Hello, Alvaro. Or Ambroso. Sorry. Both are in green highlights today. Um, yeah, I think we're going to sit this one out from the attack there. Now, what I want to do here, I think, is we want to uncheck it. Because you need to move sh sh um, surface groups and um, submarine groups separately. They're going to come out here. And... USS Grayling, we will send them out. So yeah, so there were a lot of Southern trained VMI graduates in the, or a fair amount considering um, things. Now, please do note, we have zero trucks and zero um, transport, so we cannot really effectively move any of these forces out of the United, any of the surface forces out of the United States. Um, I think though, and I, we're going to see about moving these guys to Australia. I don't know. Mm. What is Alvaro saying? Just levels, but for the country player, it'll be fun. A lot of fun. Yeah. Um, 
So let me let me say this, and I've not played um, a Gary Grigsby's War um, in the Pacific. I've seen some of it played. That is a very detailed game. It takes a long time to play. I don't. Um, hey, Beam Slam. And so, I think this hits the sweet spot. This game with with the amount of detail in the game without being overly um, detailed. Now, another thing here is, and I don't know, is the, because um, we don't really have enough oil for um, Australia to even operate its aircraft at this time. I don't, I just don't know about the history. It just, it seems awfully limiting, but um, so we, we can move the aircraft via rail but we can't move them via um, ships now here. We've already lost the Prince of Wales, the Repulse, and the Destroyer. So we're going, to, or what's left, we're going to move these guys down to here. Derby. So now we are sort of recreating Abda Float, but not um, here. It, Abda Float basic, well, Repulse and uh, the Prince of Wales got sunk out here earlier on, but um, Abda Float was uh, operating out in this part of um, uh, this is the Java Sea, I guess, uh, and gets sunk out here um, for a mixed fleet. Um, I think it is does fairly well. So all right. Um, yeah, I want to move these guys a little further forward. Now, what I do like about this game is that for things like rail movement, each nation has a rail capacity per turn, so that couldn't have taken up any um, oil movement to get that done. But we get the aircraft into the, th or, you know, in the theater near the area of operation. Right, okay. Um, this is tricky. This is tricky here. I want to quickly remove. Okay, so this is just a city here. Was there any thought, Alvaro, to adding um, fortifications to here? Um, there is Fort Drum, which has four 14-inch um, naval guns and proper naval and two naval turrets that you know are basically equivalent to a battleship sitting right here that um, does very well. And then, of course, there's Corregidor. Now, translating what is important to a tactical game might not translate well to this level of a strategical game. Right, yeah. Um, I just wondered sort of about also, um, because it, it limits Japan's ability to operate naval forces in this area. Um, they hold out till May, I believe. Um, of 42, uh, Fort Drum does, and keeps basically Manila Bay closed to the Japanese until that point. So yeah, uh, I know um, with Corregidor, and we'll see how this all goes. Um, here, okay, I'm, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how much I should move back here. Right. Okay. Now we're going to also look at reduction again. And I've talked to Alvaro. I really wish this panel was over here. Uh, if you do click here, it will say how many are in the build queue, but still it would just be nice to be able to see it, see at the glance. Um, but what is important, one of the things I want to do here is shift the up reinforcement upgrade for China. Instead of stockpiling, I want to reinforce frontline units 
here with that with China. I think that is important there. Um, Britain stop piling up. Keep. Oh well. No, oh, just the Prince of Wales is here and basically sucking water in. Um, doesn't have a whole lot of operational units at the moment where it's more Burma and Singapore and India. Now, um, this is why well, it's the multiple clicks here. Okay, so we're getting some transports in March. April, a bunch in May, June, right, and then of course battleships coming, um, carrier groups, battle divisions, very good. I think we'll still build, see about building some landing ships, just sort of looking to the future. Um, Supply, whatever. We have fun with both. Yeah, I would agree, Van Bishop. I really like Strategic Command for World War One. I. I love it there. And it is, and it is done well for World War Two, or yeah, for, or you mean for World War One? It, it's good at World War One. It's best, I mean, no, it's good at World War II, Strategic Command. It's best at World War I, in my opinion, um, for, with that engine and the way it's set up. So there we have that. Um, India, oh, that's Canada. It's hard to tell them apart here on the map. Okay, basically we're doing upkeep, getting a little bit of a stockpile. Um, I don't think we're going to see much for the Dutch. Uh, Philippines, yeah. All right, I don't think there's too much purchasing we want to do for that. We've already got some support ships coming. Okay, I think that's good for our first turn. But we can see that... The map is at a good scale to allow, you know, tactical decisions instead of just big, big stack move around kind of um, decisions here. And and I get the game balance point here um, that we're not moving into um, Burma. Don't know where um, best to hold from the possibility of the Japanese coming up north from here. But we'll see what we can do. Putting forces ashore on the beach. That's what I was afraid of, that they were going to race me forward. I want to try to get behind a, a river defense line and see how long it can hold there. Absolutely, Van Bishop. Though, if those of you don't know, there was actually a computer version of Third Reich. I bought it way back whenever. Um, the big problem was no AI. So it was purely a um, two-player game. And I had no one to play it with. Need more friends. Oh, I had friends. But trying to convince them to play Third Reich was difficult. Not saying I had huge numbers of friends, but no one wanted to play my war games with me. 
Okay, U.S. delivers resources to China. Excuse me, um, Burma Road with five production to oil um, via the air hump from Leido Kunming. Five production, one oil. Japan invades India at uh, Dutch East Indies at, and we're seeing low or no supplies. So let's come over here and see what we can do. Right. Okay. What I want to try to do here is just get behind this river. So I figure we're not going to hold Rangoon. As a military commander, I want to try to make um, decisions that will have the best outcome. May not be good. I don't know that we will be able to withdraw down to here and or get Kuala Lumpur. Okay, we're getting rain, but we're getting, and I like this about War Plan. Um, it's frustrating at times, but war games are supposed to be that way, but I like this. We have um, two conditions here, if you're not familiar with it in um, War Plan Europe, I guess is now becoming the name. Um, you have rain and you have heavy rain. Um, or monsoon rain, or I don't know what you want to call it. Um, rain limits your um, effectiveness. Heavy rain um, stops air operations from um, happening. So I cannot um, really attack. Well, this would need to be um, with ground. So since we really can't attack, and I don't want to just have my aircraft die here, Let's see if we can get it to Australia. See if we can fly it out. As you can see, I'm trying to save what forces I think I can. Okay, that's what you call. Well, marketing. Marketing. Um, I'm not that I think War Plan um, Pacific or War Plan Europe is a bad name, but we got to think marketing. What? What do you want to call them? Okay, we've got out here submarines. Now we're using our submarines as a bit of a reconnaissance force. And I have, like um, Alvaro was saying, I have no idea where that Japanese fleet went. Just trying to do some reconnaissance with it. Now, both navies, the Japanese and the American Navy, were both Mahanian navies, and that comes from Alfred Thayer Mahan. He um, was an American uh, naval historian and enthusiast, so that. Um, and he wrote uh, The Influence of Sea Power Upon History. I believe that's sort of the more or less correct title. Often shortened to influence is what it's um, called. So there's a lot of difference between Japanese and American operating doctrine, but they both have the same sort of strategical mindset when it comes to naval operations. I'm not sure that there's a whole lot more I could or should be doing at this point. They've got Rubal, move some forces in there. Those are about ready to land, it looks like they're mm, moving them. I don't think those would help. Um, we're at limited supply here. We're still trying to raid out here. Um, Let's look in here. Right. I'm. Um, yeah. I think we're going to move back into the mountains here if we can. Let's. I'm going to send them back. Um.
you know, we'll sort of give these guys a link up here. It doesn't look like I'm going to hold them long anyways. And let's take a quick look at supply. Yeah, that's pretty poor supply. So if I were to move him to it'd be right about there, that would be enough to try to hold this supply corridor open and they won't maybe come around it. I want to try to, of course, hold Chungking and Chengtu. Slow down here. Oh, interesting. Okay. I just don't know that there's a lot we can really do. If we just. Hmm. Four to one. That looks like a very good attack. So let's do that. They lose and hold. See if we can actually limit. limit. Okay, well, we push them back. And no, I'm not going to move into there, but that was maybe useful. Push them back a little bit. Hello, Tony First Gen. Right, okay, well. I think we'll leave these guys just where they're at. I'm going to put them on full support here so that they will help with against enemy attacks. We've lost our air force there, destroyed basically. Don't know a whole lot more other than getting over to the production queue again. Um, well, for China, okay. Upkeep, we have a stockpile, but we're trying to upgrade our reinforce our forces in the front. In the USA, um, again, I think we're going to go for Um, now, when we can, let's see, we currently have some Marine Corps divisions, get them into production too. Um, no, I think we'll, we'll we'll stick with the big stockpile and not just blow everything out too early. Canada, anything to build? Not really. Okay, India, we're stockpiling. We'll try to get, let's see, 78. We can see about getting an infantry division to help. Or, well, wait, I don't know, probably an infantry division to help out on the, what will become sort of the Burma or the Assam. Front and of course, there's no nothing to deploy yet. It'll highlight itself when there is. So, um, I think I'm looking here at China. What, if anything, we should do? Trying to hold the area effectively. Yeah, they're behind the river there, holding up there. Hold at this river here. Try to hold Burma as best we can along these two rivers. Well, it's all connected to the same river there, I guess. But yeah. That is sunk. We have the core holding there. All right. So far, I would say the AI is doing very nicely. 
or it's sort of explosive expansion. Getting ashore, securing, basing. attack us. Now they've moved, looks like, and we'll see if they stay out of Kuala Lumpur, which is one of our, you will, victory conditions for trying to hold the Malaya Peninsula. All right, more deliveries of aid to China. Pike um, attack South China Sea convoy lane with one group sinking zero merchants and escorts. Okay, so our um, submarines are operating um, against transports, but um, didn't sink any. Again, going very historical with bad torpedoes. And they were bad in both their um, depth registers, so they were going much deeper than they thought they should be. I'm going to move him down to here. Just to keep them moving around a bit. Okay, now these are running out of supply. We can get these guys down to Derby here. Okay, so we successfully evacuated the Dutch Air Force. We're going to move down to here. They're going to move to here. At least do it as long as we can try to deny that to the Japanese. And yeah, this is really tricky, and I, I totally understand Alvaro's decision on this. Uh, Britain got beat on the, the Malaya Peninsula by um, really in a much more tactical level than this of outflanking the forces sent to delay the attack or the movement down the peninsula. But they were literally out of ammunition, basically, um, by the time they get to Singapore and secure the main water supply for the Singapore island. Had the British, they had some very good Commonwealth units, did even a reasonably decent job at counterattacking, the Japanese would be defeated. I, it could have been a major turning point in the war. Um, but Sims just, I think that's the commander's name of um, the Singapore garrison, just only saw his problem and didn't consider the enemy's problems. Um, and so he saw the enemy because they had been so successful as being a successful army and didn't conceive, conceive in his mind that they just couldn't even, res, even resist a basic counterattack. And where like in German philosophy, you, know, you, you, look at, you can be assured that the sun will rise in the east and the Germans will counterattack if they lose a position. Um, that's the German, they don't care, they lose a position, they're always counterattacking, which is something because often, you know, this is whether it's at a, you know, at a squad level or at a divisional level, because the person who's, you know, the enemy who's just pushed into their former position may be very, very disrupted, and any incoming fire may create a panic in the enemy's troops, and they flee. So it's not that the German counterattack will always be like um, hard and push in it at the enemy because they may not ha even be able to do that. 
but they always counterattack with something else. And this isn't in the British mindset or doctrine in combat. So you don't have Sims just deciding to let, let's push it and see what happens before surrendering. Where um, So he doesn't fight for um, Singapore. Now, the Hong Kong garrison, which was much smaller, much um, less well defended, does fight and does lose um, with considerable loss of life, I understand. So, um, you know, the two choices, not saying, well, obviously it would have been better to push back, but you don't know, you know, what's in the commander's mind and what he's doing at the time. So it's, it's really interesting. Um, you, oh, we're, s how interesting, okay. So the Japanese look like they're doing some commerce raiding out in the Indian Ocean, which did happen a little bit, I know it, um, but not much. The Japanese submarine force was not a commerce raiding submarine force. Okay, I don't know if we should continue, if there's any point to continue looking for the Japanese fleet. I don't know. Now let's head back to Pearl Harbor. I don't, now that we are here, um, we do have, we can bring out the, the carrier group and leave. Well, we can take the, the Nevada out with us if we so choose. But I don't know to what good effect. Um, I don't know if chat has, whether we think, I mean, you know, the Midway Island type situation or well, maybe an anti-submarine. I don't know. I don't know. Let's... Let's move you out to here as well. And we have units that we can deploy. Um, who's ready? Okay, so for Colorado, let's see. Um, we'll put them in San Diego. That was the traditional um, Pacific basing for the U.S. Navy. They were sort of pushed out into to um, Hawaii to confront the Japanese Navy. Ship can't even see. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, Beam Slam, at times you can um, move to engage a, a fleet that has been... A, we have hidden fleets now, so we don't know where the enemy is. Um, this is because they have spotted submarine activity around the island here. Um, but you can come in, especially like with bad weather, come in to attack that hex that you know that there's a fleet there and have no combat action because you don't find and identify um, the units in that um, hex, in that fleet, in that engagement. So that it is not an assured thing. Still not sure about this. Okay. There were quite a lot of supplies, I do know, in um, the Philippines. What happens, my understanding is, is plans changed. Originally, it was they planned to defend the Bataan Peninsula. Then they did basically this, at least with up to here, to try to confront the Japanese naval landings. And then when that they didn't either def weren't able to hold them, let alone push them back into the sea. Um, and I think we're going to withdraw back to here. Um, they never moved the supplies out of Manila to the Bataan Peninsula. So um, I don't know whether it was just they forgot, you know, the person in charge who was supposed to do it just didn't do it, or whether there just wasn't enough like truck transport to get it out there. But that that really um, limits their ability to operate. It is not moving those supplies. So the closer they are to your control supply bases, the better chance to spot. Naval um, recon planes seem vital. Subtracted by detection levels. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, we can't just fix, locate, destroy the fleet, which is 
um, very correct because at one time um, the U.S. Navy does do or the the carrier fleet does come through basically I believe through here and do um, airstrikes now they, they try to hide just where the carriers are but do some airstrikes on the naval bases here and then leave as a um, way to try to distract and it may not necessarily well maybe around January maybe a little later um, try to distract from naval operations that are going down and around here by uh, making the Japanese concerned of where the um, U.S. fleet is and operating. So, okay, so I've done what I sort of think I can with getting air units out of